If you've seen more than one of my videos, you no doubt have realized that I'm pretty fond of the iPad experience, especially as it pertains to music production. But there's one overarching gripe with iPad OS that I've had for a long time. And it looks like Apple is starting to give us some of what is long overdue. Today, I'm gonna to tell you exactly what that is and why I think it's so big for iPad music producers. What is up creatives? I'm John Rail, your music technologist, here to help you master the tech you need to make music freely. I go live weekly and I drop lots of videos all on music production, giving you gear reviews, tip and tutorial videos, all in the realm of music production to help you make dope music. If that sounds good to you, definitely hit that like button, consider subscribing, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next time I go live or drop a video. That being said, let's get into this content. So I have up right here in front of me, my iPad Pro 11 inch, and some things have changed in iPad OS 15. So I'm running the current official iPad OS 15. This is not the beta. This is the real deal, the final release. I've mentioned this in videos before, but some of the most, one of the most annoying things for me with iPad music production, here it is. It's the file management. It's, it's just been so inconsistent, so rough, and it, and it makes it hard for iPad music producers where we have to store our files, we gotta be able to transfer stuff. If you're someone that does music production and video editing like I do, then this is a really big deal. Let me just, quick story time. Before I had this wonderful 11 inch iPad Pro with one terabyte of storage, some of you guys may remember my previous iPad was a 12.9 inch 2018 iPad Pro. But that iPad only had 256 gigabytes of storage. I didn't initially buy this iPad for music production. It wasn't until I got into making content that I was really like, wow, should have got more storage. So I was relying heavily, heavily on external storage. Stay with me. I'm getting there. <laughs> So I have, you know, lots of these guys, these external drives. I got, you know, this is a one terabyte drive. I had a few of these and drives like these come formatted in XFAT. And this is actually going to apply to you guys that have, that have, you know, iPads with lesser storage. You're probably trying to use some sort of external storage. So keep, keep listening. But I was running into these issues where I'd have to keep offloading my files, especially video files. Also, you know, some music related stuff to these drives. And it was a terrible experience just terrible because I would have so many issues with the files actually transferring over in the files app. It would get stuck, it would hang up and they wouldn't finish. And you would never know how far in the file transfer you were because there was no progress bar. There was a little circle that showed you progress, but it usually was just spinning and spinning. And then when it finally did show progress, it would get halfway there and then it would be done. So you would never really know how long it was gonna take. Well, a lot has changed. Some of it to do with hardware and a lot of it to do with iPad OS 15. And I'm gonna show you guys what's changed. Now that I have this, you know, one terabyte iPad Pro, it's not as big of a deal because I just keep most of my files straight on the device. But every once in a while, I do need to use one of these guys and iPad OS has made this so much better. So let me show you. The files app is really nice. Now, this is what I would normally do if I was gonna transfer some files. You know, I would drag over a file window, have two windows side by side, right? So I would do this, grab my USB drive and I would go ahead and just plug it into my hub here. Right over here, I have my, my CalDigit drive and it should recognize it straight away. Yep, there it is, it's called Rocky. And so I would go to transfer something to my iPad, right? Now, if I want to transfer particularly a large file, let's do this one, 5.92 gigabyte file. I drag it over and here's what happens. Aha, we have progress here and we have a progress window right up here. If I tap that, thank you. My goodness, is this wonderful. Copying, it tells me what, how fast it's copying, how long it has left. And all of that info is right there and it's just beautiful. Now, another thing, a lot of times there's an X here where I can cancel that transfer. 
Really quick, I realized this after filming, so I'm gonna add this little clip in, but the reason why I was unable to get the progress bar to show the cancel option is because you have to press that little edit at the in the window. So for example, if I drag this file over, right there you see the progress, you tap it, right? You can hit edit, and then you have the option to cancel it just like that. Super easy. Now back to the video. So that's the first big change. Really quick, if you're getting value out of this video, definitely give this video a like. It does a lot for the channel. It also helps fine tune your suggested feed with more content like this. So it's a win-win, definitely do that. And we're back to the content. So with transferring files, we now have progress bars and that makes a big deal. Also, I'm noticing that a lot of the issues that I was having with my drives is solved and that has to do with the xfat file system so without getting too far ahead of myself we're getting too technical here support for for different file systems has gotten much much better on the ipad i was having issues with my xfat file formatted drives which is the default for most external drives pretty much every external drive is going to come formatted xfat and when i would plug it in that is where i would get issues i would transfer video files over and they would get all kinds of like graphical errors and issues in the finished file so my files were actually getting damaged basically in transfer that is no longer the case they seem to have fixed whatever bugs were happening with XFAT. It recognizes my drives really well. Also, brand new to iPadOS 15 is NTFS support. Here's what that means. Basically, NTFS is a Windows computer-based file system that can be used on certain drives. And uh, before, you could not even read those drives on an iPad. Now, with iPadOS 15, it supports read support only. So, what that means is, basically, if I want to plug in an NTFS drive, I can do that, and I can drag files from that drive to my device. I cannot drag files from my device to that NTFS drive, but it supports you know reading not writing so that's a welcome addition i know for the windows folks i personally am a mac guy so this isn't going to really matter for me but it might help for you something to keep in mind is if you're going to delete a file off of your external hard drive make sure after you do that you go over here to your recently deleted and then you go over here and you delete it so right click delete now that will fully delete it and you will not be able to recover it but what that does is the next time you unplug your drive, you're not going to have any issues with your hard drive. So what that, what's happened with me before is I would plug in my hard drive, transfer some files, delete some files, and then when I would unplug it, you know, go about my business, come back, plug it in later, there would be issues reading the drive. And to me, I think what's happening is basically iOS is keeping something to do with these files, either still on the drive or still on the iPad, and it's messing with how everything functions. So if you didn't know this, when you're connecting or disconnecting drives in iOS, or iPad OS rather, there's no eject button for your hard drive, right? Like there would be on a Mac or even on like a safely remove button on a Windows PC. There's no button for that. So when I go over here and I just unplug this drive right here, you're gonna see it just go away. Yep, and there it is, it went back to my iCloud. So that means, you know, Apple through iPad OS is having to do a lot to make sure that these drives are safely removing and uh, the less hiccups you can give it, the better. So just keep that in mind. If you delete a file, make sure you go into your recently deleted and delete it again. And you can do that with multiple files. So a couple more changes. Now, if you want to click and drag over files, you can. We'll go to the grid view, uh, icons, here we go. So now if I'm in grid view and say I want to drag over these files and copy and paste them, I now have a real marquee drag tool. This did not exist before in iPad OS. I can now select all of my files that I wanna move with mice and trackpads. So with a mouse or a trackpad, you can now use the marquee tool. Small adjustment, but that's really welcome. I really like it. So another thing that has changed here in iPadOS 15 with file management is the ability now to use groups. So what this does is it allows you to break these different sections based on what kind of file type they are or whether it's a folder. So if I hit use groups right now, 
it's going to break it up based on here's folders right here it has a little uh, bar at the top and that bar stays there until you pass the folders right next is music and that will change to music now see and then I got movies down here so it's breaking it up by by groups and that's really helpful for finding the type of file you're looking for it's really going to help you when you're doing stuff like when you're in beatmaker 3 you've got your folders right and say i go into my samples library so i've got some folders where i've broken things down and then i've got music and then there's a separate one for archives so all my zips are going to stay away from my music files this is going to make sorting through all this stuff way easier you can choose what it's grouped by so you can group by date or by size so just makes it really a lot easier to find what you're looking for and that's a welcome change for sure i know this isn't the exciting stuff of ipad os but this is the stuff that really does make a difference in the experience and i'm here for it it's not just the cosmetic things that they've given you the new options the new progress bar but it's also the improved performance of transferring files also if you have an 11 inch ipad pro or really any size ipad pro specifically the M1, you now have Thunderbolt on your device, which means you can plug in Thunderbolt drives and you can get Thunderbolt transfer speeds. It's much, much, much faster to transfer your files on this than it was for me to transfer it on my previous iPad Pro, the 2018 model. Quick question, what's the main gripe that you have with the iPad that you wish Apple would address? Jump down in the comments right now and let me know. I would love to chop it up with you guys about that. All right, creatives. Go make something dope, and I'll see you in the next video.